Congresswoman Jackie Spear came forward with her own story of sexual assault, and it went viral. Take a look. I was working as a congressional staffer. The chief of staff held my face, kissed me, and stuck his tongue in my mouth. So I know what it's like to keep these things hidden deep down inside. Many of us in Congress know what it's like because Congress has been a breeding ground for a hostile work environment for far too long. Yay, yay. Wow. Now she joins us live from Washington, D.C. Hello, Congresswoman. Good, good morning. Um, Spear, it's Joy Behar speaking, but before we get into that topic, we were just talking about yesterday's terror attack. The administration is saying they, they want to step up extreme vetting, and I made the point that that might help a little bit, but there are tourists coming over here. Anybody could actually do what this guy did uh, uh, yesterday. Uh, was it yesterday or the day yes, it? Yesterday. Yes, so what do you think about all that? What do you say to all that? Well, Joy, you're right. Actually, we have a situation in this country now where lone wolves are everywhere. And we have extraordinary law enforcement and intelligence officers who are surveilling them. But it takes an inordinate amount of labor and time and effort. And sometimes we catch them and sometimes we don't. But extreme vetting is not going to solve this particular tragedy because clearly he had been here for seven years and had become part of the, the community. Right, right. And anybody can just come over here. But let's get on to the other subject and the reason that you're here because you were assaulted over 40 years ago. Why did you feel you had to keep it a secret until now? Well, you know, back then in the 70s, sexual harassment wasn't even a term that was used, and it wasn't coined until later that decade. And then in the 80s, when it was found that under Title VII of the Civil Rights Act, it was a violation, that it was a form of sex discrimination. So back then, it wasn't as keenly uh, defined. Mm -hmm. And so I, I took it, like most women at the time took it, you just stayed away. You made sure that you weren't in that kind of a situation again. And as it turned out, I, I didn't have any other incidents with this particular individual. Yeah. But now, times are changed. And I think that we have a means by which we can hold people accountable. Unfortunately, Congress is not doing it. Uh -huh. Congresswoman, this is Sarah Haynes. Uh, I wanted to ask you, senators like Claire McCaskill and Heidi Heitkamp have come out with some stories, um, with their own stories of harassment, also Kellyanne Conway. Since you released your video on Friday, have you heard from other women that have experienced similar things? I have. Now, for most of us as elected members of Congress, we're in positions of power. We need to focus on those who are vulnerable, the staffers who are afraid to come forward for fear they'll lose their jobs. And we have heard from a number of victims who haven't come forward publicly for fear that they will lose their jobs. And what is the culture like for women working on Capitol Hill? Because we all see that the representation isn't necessarily equal to the population. So you're outnumbered. Um, what is it like there? So it's an institution, 80% of which is male, and you have a position <coughs> held by these men who are in power, and because the system protects them. I mean, if you have fought, been violated, you go to what's called the Office of Compliance, and you have to go through what's called legal counseling for a month, and then you have to go through mediation, and then you have to wait another month before you can even file a claim, and you are required to file a non-disclosure agreement when you start mediation. So the perpetrator is never outed, and in fact, any kind of settlement is paid for by all of us as taxpayers at the U.S. Treasury. Oh my gosh. <laughs> Congresswoman, this is Sunny Hostin. Um, your story of the process is, is just ridiculous, but you're working on new legislation to change the system. Uh, we hear what will that entail? So it is shockingly biased in favor of the institution and the perpetrator. So besides requiring mandatory training on sexual harassment for both the members and the staff, we're going to change the process. So we're going to shorten the length of time uh, that you can file a claim. You will be able to then not be required to file a non-disclosure agreement. We're going to make sure that some of the most vulnerable, the interns and fellows who work in Congress, have nowhere to go right now, and they will be protected under this new law that we will be introducing. Hello.
Hello, Congresswoman. This is Megan McCain. So we, I just want to switch gears here. We've been talking a lot about Mueller's Russia investigation since it began. You are a member of the House Intelligence Committee. Can you tell us what we can expect and who do you think should be nervous at this moment? Well, I think Michael Flynn will certainly be someone who will come under the crossfires of the Mueller investigation. I would suspect that he will be uh, indicted as well. I think that the Mueller investigation is doing an extraordinary job of being non-political, looking at the law and basing their decisions on the law. I think the investigations going on by both the House and the Senate are much more complex because they're political institutions and certainly in the House there is a difference of opinion as to what we should be looking at. But for all of us as Americans, we do not want an adversarial force okay. to come into our country and impact our elections. And that's exactly what the Russians did. And what do you, what do you what do you think about um, Trump dismissing Papadopoulos as an errand boy? What do you think about that? Well, you know, he's very good at somehow uh, suggesting that everyone's a volunteer. And the truth is, in the campaign, a lot of people were volunteers. Even the chairman was a volunteer. A lot of people didn't get paid. They were supposed to get paid. But he was right there. <laughs> he was right there interacting with the top members of the Trump campaign uh, hierarchy. He was sitting at a meet meeting with the National Security Advisory Committee. The president, when he was a candidate and was asked by the editorial board of the Washington Post as to who his national security advisors were. He mentioned George Papadopoulos and you know he doesn't have the ability to remember a lot of names so I thought that was significant in and of itself. <laughs> and that's a hard one to pronounce. <laughs> Congresswoman, the next time you're in New York, come and sit with us at the table. Mm -hmm. And oh, just not to. for nothing, when you talk to these interns that you were talking about, tell them they have to stick together and they have to have each other's backs. And if they have that, they'll be protected until you can get stuff in order because nobody should be nervous about talking. They can talk to their friends. If they got each other, then they, that's step one. Thank you for coming, Jackie Spear. Strengthen Come you. back again. We'll be right back. She's great.